what's going on you bunch of heretics grab your paint pots grab your recaf and let's put some paint on that ever-growing pile of potential it's here the heresy is my therapy slap chop slap chop tutorials today we're going to give the xenos a little bit of love the behemoth high fleet or high fleet behemoth is the color scheme of today with some tyranids getting painting uh, i believe we have the hamburgons uh, for today's painting routine so uh, yeah as always everything you need for this video will be in the description below without further ado let's get to it as always we have got our model primed uh, however you want to prime it ideally um, you know if you want to spray it if you want to paint it that's fine but as long as we've got a, a base layer of a, a black ideally chaos black or abaddon black on our model as always we're going to work from mechanica standard gray administratum gray Orthron gray and of course white scar as always first of all we're going to use our as always again like i said before medium dry brush with our mechanica standard with every now and then a little bit of mechanica standard with our small dry brush small dry brush with the rest of the grays and the white at the end all right and then we use those once we get uh, going so yeah you know the routine guys if you've watched the fundamentals you'll know mechanica standard gray a little shake up prep our dry brush Plenty on. And then of course, as always, we take it all off. Yep, and then of course, we just small circles around the model. This is the first time of doing a Tyranid, a lot more flimsy than a Space Marine. So just be careful, take your time with it. Soft strokes, we don't want to damage it. We don't want to snap it, we just Eat myself around the model. Yes, yeah, so all I'm doing, I've applied my really good layer of Mechanica Standard Grey. I'm now using my next layer, my Administratum Grey, same again, and I'm just getting in everywhere. Administratum Grey on, and again, you don't need to be neat with it. Get all the, get his little his tactical rock. We've got some really good, we want this to be really nice and vibrant. It's going to get grimmed up with this thing pretty soon, don't worry. We're going to go from real vibrant to real grim and dark real quickly with this thing. Again, just be really careful. You're a bit finicky, is that the right word, finicky? On this one, so just be careful with it. Okay, a bit more on there, just take it off, take it all off, and we're just going up and down the model again, but really starting to pick out those areas with the administratum grey, and we've still got two more layers to go guys. Cool, I think I'm quite happy with that. Yeah, so as you can see, the administratum grey is on there. And now what we're going to do, we're going to use our Ultron grey. Yep. As always, Ultron grey. A little bit of shake up. Oh, sorry. A bit of shake up. Again, you know the routine, guys. With all these videos, it's the exact same setup. Ultron grey. And again, remember, guys, we're going to go down the model. But actually, we're going to just bring it over where all the light is, all those light touching areas. Really exaggerate the face, tongue, horns, all the tops. Okay, just really pick out those areas with the with your Orthron Grey. 
Don't forget your tactical rock. Get that thing nice and bright. Make it look like a rock. <laughs> Go wild with that one. And like I say with the rest of it, just, just pick out the edge. Remember we're going, remember with the author and we're going down, we're not always going up. And then in here we're just gonna just gonna smush it a little bit in there, as it were. But yeah, so we're just going down the model. No change again, as we have been on all the other models that we've been slap chopping. Again, if you haven't seen it, go back to the to the, uh, to the tutorials. There we go, beautiful. Yeah, oh, it's all coming together nicely now. It's all coming together. All right, next up, you know it, I know it. White scar, white scar. Beep, boop, beep. Same again. Put some on the brush. Get it all off. Get it all off. Yeah, just put a bit on our thumb if you have to. Same again. Boom. Really basically picking out those top bits. Oh, I'll tell you what, this is, I think, slap chop really suits models like this. Really does what we'll see in a minute. We will indeed see in a minute. Anyway, just pick up the face a bit. Yeah, pick up that face and a little bit on the, a little bit on the underside. Why not? Just having a bit of fun with it. Eh? And then back on the old tactical rock. On his little tail. I say little. What's interesting is the size comparison. Let me just get you a space marine. Actually, here's one we painted earlier. That's, you know, fairness. I mean, that's a that's a fight right there. So there we have it. That's our prepared slap chop prepared um, Hermagant. I try to get this right. I'm sure the Termagant's one with the weapons is like Terminator. So there you go. Done. Right. Then. Let's get colouring paint by numbers. Okay, folks. So. Oh dear, sorry. Polishing off that coffee. So I'm going to go with Flesh Terror's Red. Flesh Terror's Red. And again, don't forget guys, we've got our, our wet palette. So Flesh Terror's Red. As I say, everything you need is in the description below. So with our Flesh Terror's Red, I'm going to go, I've got my small synthetic. Uh, two of those. And I've got, of course, my medium one. So again, just get a little bit of paint on there. Let's get some paint on there. There we go. Again, two to one, three to one, one part water, three parts flesh terror's red. And remember, we want to be getting it in the in the skin, not his carapace. So the arms. And we just want to be mindful of these little gaps because that's going to get painted shortly, all right? So we just want to be very mindful of where we're painting. But again, we're painting by numbers. If you've got reference material like uh, Instagram photos, you know, use them. You know, or the, of course, the Games Workshop website. Remember, nice and thin. That's what we want it to be for the time being. Nice and thin so we can move the paint around. We want to be able to move the paint around. There we go. And if we need to go over it, we can do. Remember, we're going lighter colour first, so the red really is the is the lighter colour. That's why we're gonna do the red first. Okay, red first. Because when we go over with our our darker colours, it'll be all right. It's better to make the mistakes with the light first, and because uh, you can make it darker, you can always make it darker. Is what we want. Yeah, we're just in amongst these little leg bits here. There we go. So yeah, just keep going with that. Oh, that's already looking grim and it's already looking dark. I am looking forward to seeing how this is gonna turn out. Oh, look at that. Oof, we oh we. There we go, the first bit all done. I don't think we've missed anything on there. Doesn't look like we have. And uh, yeah, he's all, uh, that first little bit is all good to go. 
That looks nice, that. Right, okay, next up we're gonna use, we're gonna get our pterodon, pterodon, <coughs> pterodon. We're gonna get our pterodon turquoise, okay? Our pterodon turquoise. Yep, pterodon turquoise. And that's just gonna go, in fact, no. I tell you what we're gonna do instead. Sorry. We're actually gonna prep the base. I'm gonna grab some technical, uh, some sterling mud. This is a fantastic, and I mean fantastic, um, fantastic little, little basin option. I'm gonna base it now. I'm just gonna slap all this on. I'm gonna base it now so that when it's, while all this stuff is all drying, we'll be able to hopefully uh, slap chop roughly at the same We'll be able to get the base. The base will dry out, but we get a little a bit of Agrox Earthshade in there. And then we can, um, or if you don't want to use the Agrox Earthshade, you don't need to. But at least we've got our little rock all done. Uh, and we can, you know, we can add a bit of metal work on that girder later on. That'll be easy enough to do as like a last sort of thing. But Sterling Mud, just pop it all in there. Like that, and that'll be all good to go. So now we've almost prepped the base. Right, now, now we're gonna go back to our Tedagon turquoise. I'm gonna get on all that carapace. Is it carapace? I wanna say carapace. Carapace sounds about right. Um, you know what? You know, you, you can just switch between whatever you wanna use. I'm gonna go back to my medium for the time being. Same again. Just a little bit of water on our palette. Nothing major amount, two, again, three to one, two to one. And same again, guys. Nice and thin, and we're just gonna move the paint around. Some of the key things that people say about with, with, um, with the slap chop routine is it comes out quite blotchy, and it does, it can do. What I found is if you water it down, just move the paint around you'll find that that blotchiness, it, it kind of goes, if you go straight from the pot to the model, you are gonna get that blotchiness. It's definitely what I found when I first started doing it. But as time's gone on, what I've learned is, if you just thin it down, you know, and then just move the paint around to get rid of all those pooling areas. It's really important, when you start to see the, the paint pooling, we just move the paint around. Just move the paint. Remember, going nice. Remember, all going nice and light. Always, always nice and light. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to get all this on the carapace areas, on his armor, on his plating. And like I say, if you see areas that are pooling, we just keep, just move the paint around. Just move the paint around. All we're gonna do is just move that paint around. See it pulling, move the paint. See it pulling, we move the paint. Okay. There we go. Beautiful. Right, we slowly start to build that up. Oh, this is looking nice. So there we have it. That's the uh, the pterodon, the pterodon turquoise applied. And I am really liking how this is turning out. I've shown the light, hopefully you might be able to see it a little bit better. Um, it's a bit, a bit bluer there, but honestly, that is really coming out exactly how I want that high fleet bear moth to look. Um, nice coloration. I've left, as you can see, these ones, because we're going to do that part in a second, and as you can see, while I've been working away, that sterling mud's starting to dry up, so that we can apply our liquid talent Agrox Earth shade in there. Uh, and then, of course, we can put the next, um, the black on the talons, a little bit on the horn. Uh, and yeah, so far, I think that is looking absolutely brilliant. So let's get back to it. So what we're going to need for our next little bit. Has that dried up enough yet? Not quite enough yet. Oh, sorry, guys. Fiddling around. So the next black we're going to need. Now, usually we would use black Templar. However... I really, really want 
these talons to look like real, like a real evil, like almost like alien-esque, uh, like the film Alien. So we're gonna use Black Legion. Now this is where Black Templar has almost like a bit of a blue hue to it. Black Templar is, is like, there is no, it's just obsidian, the abyss, eternal horror. Water it down because it's this when this thing goes on, it goes on. And all your window in the in the recesses, the blades. We're gonna make these things absolutely hauntingly, hauntingly like just no sight anywhere. Dark. And we are gonna add a bit of a shine because we're gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna add a little bit of um, at the end, I'm just going to add a little bit of technical, uh, like a uh, Lamian medium, just to give it a little bit of a shine, and that's the only bit of shine you're going to get. But I really want these sides to be just painful, painful to look at, dark, like a nightmare coming towards you, ready to pull your limb from limb tearing its enemies to shreds, ready for the biomass. That's nice, that. So again, all we're gonna do is just on the blades, and we're also gonna do it in between. It's kind of um, where the creases are, but again, make sure this is nice and thin in those creases. That's all we want it to be in there, okay? Hooves, talons, uh, and in the in the sort of little groove areas, we're going to use the uh, Black Legion. Remember, thin it down, and you can build, and you can build from there. All right. So as you can see, then guys, we've done our our next sort of system. We've got the black on the talons and the horn, and it's really starting to come alive. What I've also done as well, guys, as you can see, I've just added um, my Agrax Earth Shade uh, into the base. So you're just in a little bit of light. There you are. Hopefully you can see that quite nicely there. <laughs> uh, so what we're going to do now, we're just going to do the tongue and the eyes, uh, and then put a bit of a hue on the teeth. Okay. So for the teeth, all I'm probably going to use is a little bit of skeleton hoard. Put these back. I don't need those now. For the tongue, we're going to use our shyish purple and for the eyes as always and we're going to use a little bit of white scar and our iron den yellow okay so we're gonna, let's uh, let's get that underway so i'm going to keep the light on this time i uh, hope that might uh, help a little bit but as you can see there's the model done so first things first we're going to do the teeth remember it's the lighter of the of the in the mouth so again you know, onto our wet palette. I'm using a, a small layer. And all I'm doing is I'm just going in the teeth. And you're just going to see that kind of... It'll take a few, a few layers because it's quite a light colour. Uh, and you're just staining. That's all we're doing. We're just staining those teeth. We're not being neat with it. We're not going straight from the pot though. We are onto our palette. And all we're doing, we're just going to stain those teeth stain those teeth so it's not like a glaring white. I don't think toenids have a, have a reputation of having gleamingly white teeth. They don't strike me as that. So yeah, a couple of layers in. Again, move the paint around. Ah, that's nice. And we're just taking that shine of the white off. And again, we're just doing this just while that agrax, uh, that agrakes, that agrakes? That liquid talent, that Agrax Earth Shade dries. And there we go. And that's just hopefully, I don't know if you can see that on the camera. But as you're doing it, you'll see it. You'll just see it just start to, just to mellow out. Mellow out and yellow out, brown out, fade out, whatever you want to call it. All right, let me just keep a few layers in there. Just going around. 
Next up, we're going to grab our Shaiz Purple. Same again. Onto our wet palette. Onto our wet palette. On the tongue. Easy as that. Remember guys, slap chop we're just practically it's like painting by numbers. Now when we do the dry brush, don't worry about getting the dry brush on the tongue, it's absolutely fine. Because what we can do is we'll just go back over it with a little bit of purple. There we are, that's worked out quite nicely. Mm. Now what I did say earlier on what we were going to do, and we will get to the uh, the eye in just a second, was just a little bit of the uh, the Lamian Medium Technical. Again, just on the blades, take a little bit off there, and all we're going to do just, just on those sides. I only want it on the sides. I'm not fussed about anything else, I just want it, I just want a little bit of shine on those sides, just to... God, would you really want that glistening scythe coming towards you, that talon? Oof, no thank you. No ma'am, not for me. So like I say, just, just pop it on, spread it across. I just wanted to use it on the talons. You can use it wherever you want, but I just want it on these ripping talons. You can put it on the other ones if you want to, but for me, I just want it just on these. That just kind of gives it a bit of a glimmer on it. Gives it a little bit of a shine. That's all I want. Okay, next up, as always guys, we're gonna do, place the dot on the eye, and then obviously our, our yellow, eye and yellow. All right, white scar from earlier on. And again, just take a little bit off. And we're just going to try and get into the recesses right in here. Again, all I'm doing is taking my time. Hopefully you can see that. Again, I'm just taking my time, angling the light right. Just. Now again, it doesn't matter if it's on a little bit too thick in there. Okay, it really doesn't matter. Because... When we put the contrast paint in, it will add the shadow in there as well, which is exactly what we want. Yeah, so just a little bit in there, nothing wild. There we go, cool. And now we get our yellow, our contrast yellow, our iron yellow. You can use all sorts of yellow, but as long as you've got an iron yellow or a um, Imperial fish yellow, any sort of yellow will do. As long as it's nice and bright. And again, all we're going to do, like we did before, we're just going to pop that in there. And then you just start to see it taking shape. It's a really evil little glow in the eye. Whoa. Probably can't quite see it in the light, to be honest with you, but. That's already got a nice little evil yellow to it. Oof. No dots, just a yellow blank eye. Oof, that is not nice. Oof, that is not nice at all. What? And there we kind of have him. Uh, yeah, there we kind of have him. Looking all right there, isn't he? I would say so. As you can see, we've added the purple. We're just waiting for this to dry up. And that's pretty much the uh, the tune it done. So what we're gonna do now, guys, as we've been done before, we're gonna let this dry and then we're gonna come back and apply this Andari dust. You probably just have a, a cup of tea there, or a coffee, or you grab yourself a fresh brew, but as you can see, our Agrex Earth here is all dried. Now the great thing about Slap Chop is, for batch painting, um, you can have three, four, five, six of these. And each one's drying as each one goes by. That's why, you know, you can you can get so many done. But anyway, we are going to do our little bit of magic now. So remember, we're going to go back to our small dry brush. 
yeah, our small dry brush. And of course, we're going to need our our Zandri dust. This is the this is the magic part, as I like to call it, the bit that uh, people always ask about. Remember, guys, we're going to get loads on our brush, loads on our brush. We're going to take it off. We're going to take it all off, and we're always going to start from the base up. All right. So we're always going to start. Get it on the rock. Get it on all of it. You know, don't be afraid to get it on everywhere. And all the way really nice and light. I'm almost just feathering it on. It just takes away the blotchiness. So I'm just feathering it on. And with the, with the carapace, we're just going down the model. Again, nice and easy, nice and light. Just. Don't be pressing it. We're not pressing into it all. We're literally just feathering it over the model. If you go too hard on it, it's going to take away the red. Okay. And you can, I mean, if you want to make it dusty, you can do. Yeah, again, we'll just take a bit off the egg, a bit harder in those rocks. And again, all I'm doing is just very and lightly, just dry brushing over everything, over the entire model, just nice and light. Okay. Really easy, nice and light. And again, when I go to reload my brush, plenty on, get my paper, take it all off. Taking it all off. Bit off the, uh, off the thumb. Go on the base straight away. Yeah, go over the rock. Over the rock. Over the rock there. There we go. That's what we want. Nice. Done. And then the same again. Just all over the model. Hopefully you can see this okay in the light. Uh, I know that the camera focus is a bit of a nightmare sometimes, but uh, there you are. I'll turn the light off, see if maybe you can see that there. Yeah, a little bit better, isn't it? A little bit better. But yeah, as far as we can see now, we've really taken away the blotchiness from the model um yeah and that's uh that's it and then we just base it wherever you want to base it all i'm going to do is i'm going to put a bit of a dark silver on this uh excuse me let me get my little pen here on the iron work here i'm just going to add a little bit of a dark silver no no and a light silver then all i'm going to do is just add some flock around uh the bottom uh, and then obviously just a normal base around the edge but you can base however you want, so uh, let's skip to the part where I've added those bits. <laughs> and here he is, the final product. I uh, just added a little bit of base that I, I fancied putting on there, a bit of flock, um, and just, just base around the, uh, the edge. But there he is, all done, all finished. Uh, yeah, pretty pleased with that. Not bad at all. Pay him off. Well, there you have it. Our Hermagant from the, uh, in the in the scheme of the High Fleet Behemoth. Hope I've said that right. Sorry, Xenos players, if I haven't, I do apologise. But yes, very, very easy to do. Very few simple colours. And as always, that, that little dry brush at the end really brings out the slap chop technique that we are going for. If you found this video useful, as always, give us a little comment in the description. Give us a like. And of course, if you can, please feel feel free to subscribe for plenty more videos to come. Thank you very much. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.